My name is Gene Giacomelli, and I'm the director of the Controlled Environment Agriculture Center and a member of the Agricultural and Biosystems Engineering Department at the University of Arizona in Tucson, Arizona. My colleagues, Mr. Phil Sadler and Lane Patterson, as well as other faculty and staff, have been working on controlled environments related to production of food in space for many years. Controlled environment agriculture is taught here. It requires that you understand plants and controlling the environment of the plant to produce optimally and when desired. Capabilities and understanding of controlled environments offer many opportunities for food production here on Earth, but also for food production and life support as we travel into space. Bioregenerative life support is controlling the environment, recycling resources, and reutilizing them in a closed system for long-term sustained presence on other planets as we travel into space. The benefits are to minimize the amount of resupply necessary as we sustain life on other planets. Other benefits include information and technologies that we will develop in this program that will help and be utilized for food production systems on Earth. If we can produce our consumables in situ, then we minimize or reduce or possibly eliminate the amount of resupply that is necessary to maintain the sustaining life system on the other planet. Our prototype lunar greenhouse is an inflatable structure that is compacted to a one meter length as it's stowed and transported to the planet. And then it is expanded to a full dimension of 5.5 meters long and 2.1 meters in diameter. It is covered with a flexible membrane and it has an internal rib system to help maintain support as it will need to be buried in the materials of the planet. And that will help protect it from micrometeorites and galactic cosmic rays for those who are living and working in the system. The aerial environment around the plant is controlled by an environmental system to maintain air temperature, air relative humidity, and provide a optimum growing environment for the plant. Carbon dioxide is also supplied for photosynthesis by people breathing in oxygen and giving off carbon dioxide. In our case, we are supporting it with CO2 provided artificially from bottle. An additional key component for plant growth is light for photosynthesis. Special water-cooled lamps provide the energy for plant growth. They are 6,000 watts of electric-powered high-pressure sodium vapor lamps. The water cooling extracts significant amount of heat from the lamp so that the plant can grow almost up and touch the lamp. In the future, these lamps may be replaced by fiber optic cables, light pipes, which will direct the natural solar radiation down onto the plants. The hydroponic system provides the nutrients to the root system of the plant within a membrane envelope, which is supported by a cable at each end of the structure. The nutrient solution is introduced at each end. It flows across the root system of the plant and it discharges in the middle of the structure. The nutrient water then is recycled continuously. We have done this individually and we have done this together, which is called multi-cropping. The plants will have to share the same environment, aerial environment, temperature, relative humidity, and light. But we are able to provide different hydroponic nutrient solutions to satisfy the growth simultaneously of strawberry, sweet potato, tomato, and lettuce. It's important to provide uh, many, many types of crops because the crew requires a diversity of different crops to maintain a diverse diet. The prototype lunar greenhouse requires monitoring and control for all of its systems, including the plants. And we, we do this automatically using computer control and sensors. We monitor, collect data, store that data, and analyze it, and use this as decision support to help us monitor and control. This can be done from anywhere in the world through the internet, having web cameras for live feeds, but also a significant amount of data that is used to analyze the environment and determine how the plants are growing. Think of this as a robotic mechanism, which is producing plants to provide food, provide oxygen, to provide fresh drinking water as a life support system. The distance operation of these systems is called telepresence, which is in essence remote control. The prototype lunar greenhouse so far has been able to successfully produce plants, 
control the environment, control the hydroponic system, and communicate with us remotely. In the process, on a daily basis, we consume about 100 kilowatt hours of electricity. We then have to add about one half of a kilogram of carbon dioxide for the plants to grow. In response, they provide about one third of a kilogram of oxygen. Each 24 hour period, we are producing 50 liters of potable water from the transpiration water of the plants. These figures are based on approximately 100 kilograms of wet biomass, that is live plants growing in the lunar greenhouse. Whether we're on another planet or on Earth, uh, a controlled environment plant production system is simply plants growing in the system. You need to have the same experiences and information to be able to do that here or there. In the process, however, we offer the opportunities with the system to educate young people, to gain more knowledge about how the system operates, and to bring in other people, provide outreach about what we can do with controlled environments and where they may take us into the future. On Earth, we currently have a viable food production system growing vegetable products in greenhouses. We also will contribute to improving that technology in terms of resource recovery, resource utilization efficiency, higher quality products, multiple cropping systems, all what we learn from the life support system in the lunar prototype greenhouse can be applied here on Earth. There's opportunities for plants and control systems to provide other aspects to improve the quality of life. And this may be pharmaceuticals or nutraceuticals from plant phytochemicals that can be produced and extracted from the plant. It also can become a part of our environmental improvement by recycling uh, wastewater through plant systems to provide potable water and possibly to extract chemicals that may be in that water in the plant and dispose of them properly. This future controlled environment technology is being demonstrated now. There's the South Pole Food Growth Chamber producing fresh vegetables for the crew at the station, which is enclosed for six to eight months a year during the Antarctic winter. It's not only providing fresh vegetables, but there's a definite benefit to the psychological state of mind for those who are living and working in a dark and cold environment of Antarctica. So we see the benefits of green plants available to people who have to live and work in extreme climates. Controlled environments can also be utilized for algae production, for future development of biofuels in a controlled environment system. In addition, because controlled environments can be brought to almost any location, there is great interest in providing that in urban areas, for providing where the masses are living, growing the crops so that they're fresh, there's a very short transport distance, high quality, and then a sense of agriculture returning to the general norm of society. This is also a very exciting area. Now more than ever, we need the technology of controlled environments to help solve some of the problems in the world, which may range from feeding people to environmental cleanup to uh, trying to have people survive on other planets with life support systems. At the Controlled Environment Agriculture Center at the University of Arizona, we are working very hard to educate young people, to develop more knowledge and to put that knowledge together in applications and demonstrations so that it can be utilized effectively around the world.